Content grouping in Google Analytics administration is an important section. It's not available to everybody. In fact, you need to have a good amount of traffic in order for this feature to be available to you. We will talk today about this section in details right after this. Google Analytics content grouping is an important section in the administration part. Let's get right to it. You go there by going into content groupings and creating a new content grouping. So before we create it, let me talk about content grouping. What is it? It's the idea of bundling together a bunch of pages that need to be bundled together such as blog posts. All of your blog posts start with slash blog slash the name of the post. That's an example. Or something else, maybe slash post slash the name of the post. Depending on whatever platform you're using, you might want to bundle or group these pages together when you're doing analysis, especially funnel analysis and funnel behavior analysis. So I'll start by creating a new grouping and I will call it blog grouping. I'll go down here and create a rule set and I'm ca calling it blog pages rule. You can call it whatever you want. The idea is we want to bundle all of the pages that are of this folder structure. So everything uh, under slash blog will be categorized together and grouped together. And I'll say done. And I'll save it. Go up here. There you go. You have four groups remaining. That is the um, the downside of uh, content grouping is that they are very powerful. However, Google Analytics, the free version, does not give you a lot of groups that you can create. So you have to be extra careful and only use it when necessary. Uh, what else can we group together? Let me think of another scenario where I'm using a third-party application such as Marketo. And what Marketo does sometimes is it injects uh, a token at the beginning of every uh, domain or of every uh, URI. So what happens is, let's say I have a page which is my newsletter and uh, Unfortunately, every time somebody subscribes to my newsletter, though the URI looks the same, it ends with, um, let's say, newsletter-success, Marketo appends a bunch of characters at the end, some kind of a token, to identify the user, and that sometimes get passed into uh, Google Analytics and the results will be uh, very different. So every page will look completely different and I will get lost while trying to uh, look into the data. A good way of dealing with this situation is to bundle all of the pages together. As you can see here, I have four groups remaining. That's the downside of using the Google Analytics content grouping is that you don't have a lot of them in the free account. So you need to be very mindful while creating groups. Um, I'm going to create two more groups. Uh, one is simple and the other one is a little bit more complex. And the idea here is this. I'll try to make it more visual to you. I have a, a newsletter which is of the form info.webhawk.com slash newsletter. And I also, after somebody uh, signs up for the newsletter, they are taken to this page, which is info.webhawk.com slash newsletter dash thanks. Okay, 
So what we want to do is we want to create a group for the entrance page, the landing page of the newsletter, because we have a bunch of them because we are using Marketo and Marketo adds a lot of different variables at the beginning of or at the end of the URL. We need to make sure that they are all of the landing pages are grouped together under what we call newsletter landing page group. And then the success or the thank you page, which is a successful submission to the newsletter page, needs to be grouped together as well under newsletter success grouping. All right, so we'll create the first, uh, the first uh, content grouping and the second one right now. Let's do it. So the first one is nothing but newsletter landing page, LP stands for landing page grouping. Okay, and it is newsletter landing page rule. So what is the rule? The rule is this. The rule is that the page should be contain something like this. Newsletter. It should be of this type, correct? Yes. And however, make sure that this is matching a regular expression because we added the dot star. It means it doesn't matter what is uh, what is appended at the end, what is appended to this URI. However, we need to be mindful that another uh, rule needs to be placed which is we want to exclude, because we are only looking at the landing pages, we want to exclude the thank you page. So in that case, the page also should not contain info.webarc.com slash newsletter dash success. That's it. And now I can Save it. Another content grouping that I want to create is the successful one. This one would look like newsletter success grouping. This one should be pretty uh, straightforward. It's newsletter success rule. And the page, of course, we can do a uh, regular expression. and say info.webarc.com slash newsletter success dot star. By the way, I've made a small mistake here. When I created the previous grouping, which is newsletter landing page, notice here that because I've used the dot star, it means I am expected to use a regular expression. And because I say does not contain, I can go here and say does not match a regex. And then I'm good to go. I can save it and I'll be uh, ready to uh, start analyzing my data using these content groupings. One thing to note is there is no way you can delete these groupings. You can obviously modify any information in them, including the name or even the rules, so it doesn't really matter. You could do that. Remember, this is not going to be retroactive. So if you've applied a certain grouping, 
and after a month you decide to uh, create or modify that grouping to some other rule, then the data will not be reprocessed. It's going to be pretty much uh, confused and polluted. So be careful. Make sure you uh, think about your business right off the bat. Make sure you create the rules and also the content grouping the way they are supposed to be right from the beginning. Uh, there is no turning back here and there is no delete for the rules either. Once they are set, you can only make changes to it and you can turn them off if you don't want them. Unfortunately, if you turn one off, it does not uh, add another group for you that you can use. You only have five group uh, groupings, content groupings, so use them wisely. Until Google adds more, I think we need to be really mindful about what we use. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot and um, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also create a free account with webawk.com where I will share with you more exercises and also more code if needed. And uh, until a new episode with me, Danny, take care.